Hey guys, this is Sam with two M's. And I'm Ai, and we have two of the realest people you'll meet in the industry, guys. They're not new to the number one spot on the Mix Charts or even at the Mix Awards. They're also not new to receiving awards from Mix. They have dominated the past Mix Music Awards. They've won Female Artist of the Year, Male Artist of the Year, even Artist of the Year, Music Video of the Year, Song of the Year, basically lahat ng major categories, guys. And yes. now they are once again nominated the Mix Awards 2020 for Urban Video of the Year for Fiend and Music Video of the Year for the Collab Summer. Once again, they're not new to our eyes, but it's kind of new to our eyes to be talking to them once again <laughs> together right now. So it's an honor for us to have for a mix exclusive interview. Please welcome James Reed and Nadine Lustre. Yeah, uh, love the intro. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hi guys, thank you so much for saying yes to us. We have missed you. Can you like kind of update us on your lives? James, you recently uh, celebrated your birthday. How was it? Uh, my birthday? Wait one second. I'm switching to earphones. <laughs> um, you got this. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. yes loud yeah. and clear. Okay. Perfect. Is that better? Yep, yes. Much better. Definitely. Yeah, I just... Well, I didn't celebrate my birthday. Mm -hmm. Um... But yeah, I just stayed at home and um, actually my birthday was not much of an event. I'll be celebrating later. I'm saving the celebration when things go back to normal. Ooh. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure the celebration that you will have after everything will be so good and so great to be reunited with all your friends and family. But speaking of mm -hmm. celebrating, we have to celebrate your nominations at the Mix Awards 2020. So congratulations, of course, Thank you guys. You. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, what was your reaction when you guys found out that you were nominated for Music Video of the Year and Urban Video of the Year? There's so much I, there's so much going uh, on, so I didn't really like at first everyone was telling me, Oh, you're nominated, you're you're nominated. It didn't really sink in right away because there's so mm -hmm. so a lot of things happening, so much stuff going on. So yeah, but like sink in like mga last week lang. <laughs> End of last week. <laughs> oh great, okay. No, but it's I I, I wanna thank um Nick for nominating us again. You know, like Last year was also crazy. I got a lot of awards, so I'm just really, really thankful, Mix. I was really happy because I know we worked so hard on those music videos, yeah. Nadine especially on Summer. She conceptualized the whole thing, and we had to hike up that mountain. Yeah, the shit. Yeah. The, <laughs> yeah, with carrying a sword and all the all the gear and everything. So we really put a lot of effort into it. Yeah. And. Um, also, Fiend, we put up a lot of effort into that. We really wanted to do something that was kind of different, more cinematic. So we're really happy and uh, we're really grateful. Yeah, we actually want to talk more about that. Can you tell us about the whole shooting experience? Let's first talk about summer. So mm -hmm. which mountain was that? How long mm -hmm. did you guys shoot for? How was the whole experience? What mountain was that again? I forgot. Uh, it's the one in Rizal. Mm. Yep. I forgot. So not too far away. Not too far no. away. Not too far away. It's not too far yeah. away. I think probably like less than two hours away from the city. Oh. If I'm not mistaken, uh, but yeah, it's not so far away. But um it was really fun shooting that because it also felt felt like a, a nature trip at the same time. Although it was really hard to say um we had to do makeup and hair and dress up. Uh the mountain. So everything else was done now. My makeup artist did my makeup and my hair and all. And then we had to hike. Uh, How hike is that? Galore. Oh, yeah. yeah. It like it was like all glammed up. And then um, we had props, the flowers. Like we had a lot of flowers. We had equipment. So like everyone was carrying something going up the mountain. And I think the hike was like, how long was the hike? Like around... It's it's like two hours, but two really hours? steep. And oh it was my gosh! Imagine like how hard it was just hiking it to get to the mm -hmm. to get to the peak of it. Oh. Yeah, but pala talaga. <laughs> yeah, but in the yes. music video, it's like not obvious at all that you guys yeah. were sweating. <laughs> it paid off. It really paid off. Yeah, it definitely paid off. And one of my favorite parts of the music video was when Nadine was like in the like water and it was like. Into like, waterfalls, like, like, the man. No one knows what the waterfalls. It's funny because when we uh, when we went to the location, na, um, we didn't get to shoot because. 
parang kailangan pa yata ipaalam or something. So, we didn't get to shoot that day. And the next day, we went back and then we had to, um, you know, kasi it, it was a skeleton crew eh. It was this visual club and us. So, visual club is like three or four people. So, talagang kami kami lang. All the permits and everything, like the equipment that we needed, we had to do it ourselves. So, it's really fun. The place was beautiful. I, I forgot the name of the the name of the waterfalls, but it's also a hotel and it's really beautiful. You can rent those walls for like um for like a few hours. Nang kayo lang, just you, with you and your friends if you want to. Crazy. And Nadine, you co-directed this with Chino Villagracia. How was it like directing your own music video? It's well, the, the, it wasn't really the first time I've done it. Chino mainly directed the whole thing. I just gave him, you know, the concept and the idea for the music video. Um, so yeah, uh, working with Visual Club Cassettes, it's really nice because they're also our friends. So there wasn't any hassle well, aside from from hiking. That's it. But everything else went smoothly. <laughs> and why was this the concept that you thought of? Uh, how is it related to the song? What's the story behind the song, Summer? Oh my god. Then James wrote the song. So. Yeah. Oh, wait, James, maybe you Ooh. can tell us about this. I, I actually wrote the song. Um, sometimes when I'm writing stuff, I think, mm, maybe this should be for Nadine. Like, I write melodies sometimes, like, this sounds like it should be for a girl. So, mm -hmm. uh, this one was for Nadine. And it's... Uh, there wasn't too much thought into it. It was more like escaping, like a, like a summer escape. You know, we go through a lot um, as public figures. So it was, it was more of like escape from all the craziness. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's definitely like the kind of vibe that I get from it. It's very summer as it is, like just like your title. Yeah. But it's just such a good vibe and so is the music video and now it's Congratulations once again because it's nominated for Music Video of the yeah. Year. But Fiend, on the other hand, is nominated for Urban Video of the Year. So in this music video, it's more cinematic. We see a very like gang gang kind of Jadine. <laughs> gang yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> gang gang, right? So um, how how did you come up with the concept for this um, music video? Um, the, this one was more kind of like we're going for like a Bunny and Clyde kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, we just robbed a bank or something and then I get shots. But then kind of like the experience that I'm supposed to be going through is kind of like uh, a near-death experience or that kind of like realization. And you see in the end um, kind of as like my, it's not really my character, it's like me. I'm kind of fading away, like uh, my eyes close and it goes through all these animations. It go. I, I kind of go through all these realizations about um, about the ego and about a lot of things. Um, it's really more personal. I didn't really expect anyone else to really understand it, but it was more of like, uh, yeah, like an epiphany. Oh, that's interesting. But, I, but, like the, for... but the base of it, for the whole story, it's mainly like supposed to be like we're going for like a bunny and Clyde kind of. Oh, and I really love the vibe of this music video as well. But for you, Nadine, how was it working with James on this very, like, kind of cinematic kind of um, music video as well? I remember that shoot was really fun just because we haven't, you know, we haven't done anything like that. The first scene that we did for that one was the one in the car. You, mm -hmm. when we got shot, na, and then I, I was trying to drive the car. It was really fun because um, there's so many fresh ideas for that music video. And... Um, working with with Dom also, it was Dom and his girlfriend. There were two I'm people. The, if you, if you, there were only two people in that team, the That's why it's like you know, <laughs> you know, they're just really creative I'm people. I'm a guy. I like people. Even smaller yeah. crew. For yeah, this one. it's it's a oh, small. Really? Two How people many people were? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> what? All those action there's, scenes. There's, there's one shot where I'm kind of like standing and there's a bunch of bodies all around me. Like I'm, I'm like small and I'm standing and then uh, it's like CGI with like uh, mm -hmm. different like bodies all around me. Those bodies are actually from uh, the director's girlfriend. So it was the two of them. A director, Dom, um, and his girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah, so it was the two of them. Her name is Clementine? Clem. Yeah. So that's actually, yeah, Clem. So that was actually her. Yeah, and it was really funny because really when we were shooting that, uh, the scene with the bed, 
And then you were on the skateboard, and Brett was the one pushing the skateboard. <laughs> Even have uh, a video. Is, Do you remember that? <laughs> There's a scene thing. where I'm kind of floating backwards, mm -hmm. and then I'm I lie down in a bed, but really I'm standing on top of a skateboard that's yeah. sliding. And Brett was actually there on the day of the shoot, and he was ducking and pulling me along on this skateboard towards the bed. So if you see the behind the scenes, it's really hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like I would have never thought watching both music videos um Summer and Fiend that you would have such a uh, tiny like crew with you, but like the the way that you guys pulled it off was just amazing. It was so Thank good. You. <laughs> now, speaking of Brett, um actually uh, I got to watch your performance uh last night, James on the Identity 2020 event, the fundraising mm -hmm. concert. You actually yeah. greeted him in <laughs> at one part, like hi Brett or something, and that's how I learned. Oh, they're together. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, he's um, he's my hype man. <laughs> <laughs> he, he gets me hyped up. <laughs> and you performed a very new song uh, last night. You let people hear it for the first time. It's called "I Know You Care." You said that mm -hmm. it's a song you wrote during quarantine. Can you tell us more about this song? I decided to sing um, that song because I felt like it was really relevant with um, everything that's happening right now. I wrote that song at the beginning of quarantine and it was more of me talking to myself through like um, difficult times. And the basis of it is like, I always tell myself that you know, I don't care about that, I don't care about this, I don't care about that. And it's easier to just not care. But it stops me from really um, from really growing. And it stops me from understanding myself better and getting over a lot of stuff. So it helped me a lot writing that song. And it was my first time doing that, writing something like to myself. So I was able to get some stuff off my chest, which felt good. And I'm glad that everyone enjoyed it. Uh, that song will actually be coming out soon. So, Watch That out. was actually my next question because people are <laughs> clamoring for it. They, they want to know when it's going to be released. So yeah, the answer is soon. Yeah, that was a last-minute decision. So I was like, okay, <laughs> let's just do it. Let's just do it. <laughs> yeah. it felt right. And uh, this song you actually created during quarantine. So before we get move on with like all of our other questions, we want to ask, like, how are you guys? Like, How have you guys been coping with the quarantine? What have you guys been up to during this time? Um, we've been working on uh, Nadine's album a lot, so this is something we've been excited for and I think a lot of the fans have been like anticipating for the longest time um, when Nadine will actually produce like a full length <laughs> album. So we've been working really hard on this and uh, where I'd say where, how far are we along do you think? We have, uh, am I allowed to say? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I get mad. Yeah. <laughs> but I'd well, say we're we're like seventy percent done. So seventy percent. Yeah. I was gonna say fifty, but okay, seventy. Yeah. Some fans have actually tweeted us um, to ask about this because Nadine has uh, mentioned before that he she has ten songs so far. The album. So ngayon daw ba nadagdagan na ba yon or? It's more like. 13 or 14? Oh. I think, yeah. Secret. So <laughs> Stop asking me questions. Just the album. I love how honest talaga Jaydeen is. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But I find it really cool that you guys are still being able to stay creative even though with everything that's been happening. But how do you guys even stay creative and inspired? Like a lot of people will tend to feel discouraged, especially with a lot of things happening. But how do you guys personally stay creative and inspired? Well, to me, like I actually have more time to, you know, just be in my head and just think of like the things that I've always wanted to do that I didn't get to do like like you know um, a couple of years back but yeah because I don't know there's nothing else to do but to just you know like stay creative and write because if if you put your head into like what is really happening if oh, when, I, when I think about it it really gives me like bad anxiety mm -hmm. there's a lot of things happening and I try to I try to just 
you know, like I, I've been doing flower. Uh, the last thing I was doing. I, I don't know if you guys have seen that, but yeah, mm -hmm. this I was doing and then writing at the same time. I've also been playing a lot of computer games. But yeah, this is really the time to, to like dive into, you know, your creativity. Yeah. So we're the guys behind and us. And sabi mo nga Nadine, no, that you're you're focusing on your music, on your album right now during quarantine. And um, may mga measures ba kayo na ginawa to focus more on your music? Like you mentioned something a while ago uh, before you went live. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we did a lot. So um, I've been working with James, with Brett, uh, with Isagani, our producer, and Hi Sam. And we've just been working on the album. How useful was this lock in period for you guys? Like, um, mga anong. Do you get to work on your music like at the wee hours of the night? Because sometimes um, musicians do that. They lock themselves in so that they can they can work together even though it's past uh, sleeping time or whatever time it's more con conducive for them. So, Saenyo, how is it like uh, during your lock-in period? Well, I've become a lola because of the quarantine. <laughs> No, I swear, I, I wake up around 6 or 7 a.m. Then I pass out around 9, 9 or 10. Oh. I'm like expired now. <laughs> so I don't even, I can't even stay like late, stay up late anymore. How about you, James? Like, what's the most conducive time for you to work on your music? So, um, so far, James? <laughs> oh, it's not James. James, can you hear us? Hello, sorry. It's okay. Oh, my para may nagsasalita sa background, no? <laughs> yeah, James? that's better. I was. Oh, oh, oh. Ayan, na disconnect si James, but oh, I'm no. sure he'll be back. <laughs> I hope he <laughs> comes back. <laughs> he solves, um, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> but now let's talk about more of your quarantine mm -hmm. life, uh, Nadine. Yeah. So, um, what else have you been busy with? Uh, kasi marami actually nagtatanong about your halaman. <laughs> <laughs> I, did a lot. I did a lot during the quarantine period. I organized my my place. I cleaned my closet. Like all of the things that I I don't oh wear anymore, I sell them. Um, and then the proceeds go to like you know to um COVID affected uh you know the people or kaya I order you know mga face masks or the the, sh the face shields and then deliver them to a uh, hospital that I picked. Um. Have that. I've been cooking a lot. I've been playing computer games. What else? I've been writing, and then you know I've been busy with my plants and flowers. Yes. Too. We just started. I don't know because I'm really fascinated with the you know with the flowers. So I feel like mm -hmm. I I, I want to take it somewhere else. You know. So yeah, I've been doing flower arranging then as well. Wow. Whoa. But that is like, like, a, like you just you just find something to do so you take your mind off of what's happening. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's not it's not bad, man. I mean, I've been wanting to do flower arrangement for so long now. Especially if you oh. see, like, you know, your Instagram pages that are all about flowers and they have like yeah. weird colored flowers. You know, I've mm -hmm. always wanted to learn how to do that. So yeah, I I was actually gonna mention like I feel like your Instagram is one of the pages I see with a lot of flowers also. So <laughs> it like really made sense to me. But that's yeah. like uh, a hobby that we don't get a lot because we ask people yeah. like what have you been up to it's like cooking or i've been cleaning but to hear flower arrangement i'm like whoa yeah. that is kind of new <laughs> and like different. To really <laughs> definitely yeah. that's really very unique i would say yeah, yeah. <laughs> speaking of uh things that you post on instagram nadine i mm -hmm. think you know this you're aware of this na yung instagram feed mo is in sa mga hashtag goals talaga yes definitely <laughs> I just like to ask, like, where do you get the inspiration from? Do you really like um, put so much, um, like, like, you put in hours uh, thinking about your next post or your next theme? It's actually really easy. Um, I know people. I, I've said this so many times. It's all about color co coordination. So mm -hmm. if I post something that's this color, everything else has to be either neutral colors or the same color. Now I'm uh, I've been posting blue a lot, so everything mm -hmm. else has to have like a hint of blue, 
or meron din akong black and white if the if the color of the photo is too you know if it's too uh, vivid so yeah it's it's really easy it's just color coordination really wow now that uh, i'm like thinking about it it's like maybe i should think about my feed more now like, like <laughs> coming from the dean is very easy and it looks like that i feel like i should work on it but speaking of your instagram i actually noticed that when i was searching for you your name was kind of like different characters um yeah. it was like yeah so could you want to maybe explain like what that means if you can yeah uh so i had that tattooed on my arm can't mm -hmm. see it it's wearing love sleeves but uh <laughs> Uh, it says. Hello, hello. Oh, he's back. There you go. Oh, Hi, Jay. Sorry, that was uh, my phone dying. I told you it was gonna die. Oh, <laughs> no wonder. Okay, yes. Before so. we went live, sabi na ni James, ano na siya, low bat na siya. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, go ahead, Nadine. Oh yeah. So uh, it means um, Nozomi Komiya, which is uh, Nozomi would have uh, Nozomi kasi in Japanese. Uh, Nozomi, if you translate it, it means hope. Um, Nadine also, if you, if you, you, you mga baby name meanings, if you look it up, if you look at, uh, look up Nadine, it means hope as well. So, I don't know, like, I would just, wala lang, parang when I was younger pa, na, na isip ko na, na my Japanese name is probably Nozomi because it has the same meaning. But, Komiya kasi, um, from what my uncle uh, told me, this was like last year lang, uh, he said kasi na we have, we're actually, um, our great-grandfather is actually Japanese. And then he, but then he just changed his last name to Bustre, which is his business partner's last name. So if he didn't change it, my last name would have been Komiya. Oh, interesting. Yeah, we learned something new about Nadine today. Yes. But, um, now, oh. before, uh, well, after, pala, after mm -hmm. Mawalani James, actually, we talked about Nadine's plants and all. Mm -hmm. now, speaking of plants, James. You actually became um, the wow. Department the of guy. Yeah, Let's Department grow. of Agriculture Let's Ambassador. Grow. Hashtag Let's plant, grow. plant, plant. Can you tell us more about this, James? Yes. Um, where do I start? Um, I'm actually working with the uh, Department of Agriculture to mm -hmm. um, help uh, support all the things they're doing right now during quarantine to help... Um, help with food security. And I'm doing a couple of things um, on my own with a company I've started uh, called The Freshest. Um, basically, we're working on urban farming. So we're bringing hydroponics. And, uh, I'll, I'll be um, announcing like our like official plans in the coming weeks. So, but uh, basically, it's, um, I feel like now in this time when we're recovering from you know, quarantine and this, the economy has dropped. We have to also think about, like, now's the right time to also think about sustainability and including that in our, like, uh, recovery strategy. Because if we don't, then we'll go back to the same old normal. So mm -hmm. if there's a time to make change, it's really now. Wow, and I didn't know about freshest. The freshest. Yeah, let's grow. <laughs> yes, I really coming like, soon. Like, so just stay tuned. <laughs> Yeah, that it, when I was reading your um, Instagram post, that was the aside from you being, you know, the new ambassador. That was also yeah. the part that really struck me the most. Let's grow. Did you hear? It? Like, Did you hear? Yeah, it? I definitely yeah. heard your voice when you were saying it. But um, Nadine, yeah. you uh, you were also part of a coastal cleanup drive last February, and you've been very uh, vocal about your stand on climate change and the environment as well. So could you um maybe give us like on how you started, you know, getting more into this kind of like. Uh, conversation about the environment how did i um i don't know as a kid because i'm always really like every time i see trash on the street like on the road like i really pick it up like my wrappers and candy even though it's not mine as a kid i would pick it up and throw it in the trash mm -hmm. can and put it in my pocket and away later i don't know it's just i'm really concerned about what is happening to the environment you know um there's so much trash so much pollution, you know, you, I drive, every time I'm driving, you see a lot of cars that emit really like black smoke, which is bad for the environment, for the for the air. I, I, I guess it's really because I'm just super OC. So at home, like all of our trash, all of our trash cans are like labeled for plastic. It's for plastic, like if it's like cans or 
um, bottles or hard plastic or paper. It's all simple. And then um, for things that are, you know, food, food waste, like it's all in one, uh, it's all in one plastic. It's just really heartbreaking to see, you know, like the last beach that we went to. Um, it's really heartbreaking to see because the place is so beautiful. Like it would have been a proper if there if it weren't for all the trash that was on. It, grab it. It, it, it was it was really bad because we had shovels, and every time you dig, there's so much you know like under the sand. You stop sand, I said mud. Like mud. Under all of that muck, there's more trash. So it's just really heartbreaking to see that. And I feel like, you know, if people see me do it, and then it, it might also encourage them to, to, you know, to start being conscious about, you know, about their trash. I also want to know, I've also been thinking of like posting, you know, how to properly segregate the trash. Because I have a friend Kasi, who's really so into it. Uh, she used to be a part of the plastic solution before. So I'm asking her to teach me how to, you know, uh, to just minimize the trash. I'm trying to, I've been buying like mga shampoo bars just so I can lessen the, the waste, not have plastic bottles to throw away and all that. I'm just really against like throwing away things. I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh wow, that's interesting that you're kind of moving towards a more zero waste kind of lifestyle. But yeah. um, aside from you guys making waves in the music scene and also as actors, you guys are making waves outside that. So to you guys, how important is it for artists to join the conversation on issues outside their realm of like expertise, would you say? Um, I think it's important to just, because uh, our greatest, um, strength is our voice. Our greatest asset is that we can reach so many people. And um, there's so many crazy things going on in the world right now, like can't even get into it, but um, I think you know, it's important that we be a part of it, that we're not just um, part of the distraction, that we're also part of the solution. Or even if it's just you know starting the conversation to find a solution or yeah. Just to raise awareness about it so that people are focusing on directing their attention to where it should be. Yeah, and I, I think you also don't have to be an artist, you know, to join the conversation. I mean, at the end of the day, we all want to live in a world that's peaceful, you know, that's beautiful, everyone loves each other. Um, to me, because it's hard for me to, to just let news or watch videos. Especially like the stuff that's happening now, it gives me really bad anxiety. Like I watch it and then I get like really bad anxiety. So like it's hard then. You can't as much as as much as possible. You have to use your influence or use the voice that you have to influence people and to let them know that this is happening. We have to do something about it before it's. Well, now that we're on this topic, uh, I know a lot is going on. A lot is happening around the world. There's so much to talk about. But what's the one issue that I guess you can say that's closest to your heart or you feel the strongest uh, about? So what would that be if you could choose one? Um, <laughs> that's the closest to my heart. Yes, or like the current issue that struck you the most, that hurt you the most, or made you feel the strongest? Um, Emotions. I think really in, in general, it's just the way that people think. Um, definitely one of the most like painful ones that's happening right now is the uh, all the the racism that's happening right now in the United States because that shouldn't be something we continue into the, the new normal. Like that's something that has to die um, with the old normal. We can't bring that into the next one. So uh, yeah, I, I, there's so much happening right now. And I think the only thing we can do is really to stay positive and keep pushing out positive messages and to uh, 
support in any way we can really. Mm -hmm. I guess Thank you, James. since James said that na rin, that's also one of the things I'm like most concerned about as well. But not just in the States, no, but here as well. Um yeah. is for the environment. You know how there's so many news about the air clearing up on the island farm team, how like you know like animals are starting to they're starting to go back. Um just to know that the world is being able to breathe again because we're all inside, it kind of makes me sad to say it only means that we're doing something wrong, we're doing something to hurt the environment. So, like, why can't we, you know, like, why can't we do something about that? Why can't we just take care of our, of our world? Why can't we just take care of our planet? I mean, let's think about the future generations who are still going to live here. What's their, what are their going to be like? Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing we can do right now is really just educate ourselves and everything yeah. that's happening and in all the ways that we can help because there's already so many organizations that um, that are out there trying to help so right now everyone's more everyone's more at home um, there's so many so much we can do so I think what we should the first thing we should do is really just educate ourselves because knowledge really is power so Mm -hmm. Definitely, knowledge is power. And you guys were kind of mentioning how there's like a lot of things going on in the world right now. And, you know, some people get like, some people will find it easy to be discouraged, especially some artists. Um, but you guys are still able to create, you guys are still able to be inspired despite everything that's happening. So, what kind of advice would you want to give the people who feel kind of down and are struggling to look for or find inspiration during this time? Um, inspiration for like, songwriting because for me Art. songwriting really comes from like experience it's storytelling mm -hmm. and it's really important that um like because music has been used to uh to tell stories that have been socially relevant that have different points of view so right now we've been really inspired that by everything that's happening um uh because songwriting comes from experience and emotion so there's been a lot to to write about and um there's definitely been a message that we're trying to share through our music um especially through nadine's album um we're focusing mainly on like empowerment and self-love so when it comes to songwriting um or finding inspiration uh we re i really pull from experience there you go. Okay, now that we're talking more about your music now, um, can you tell us what kinds of themes or what we can expect from your future releases, um, Nadine's album? And James, are you releasing your own album also soon? Um, <laughs> I won't say anything yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. You were I'm able focusing. to restrain yourself this time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got that one. But um, yeah, for now we're focused on Nadine's album, like 100% um, focus on her album because uh, we're really proud of it and I feel like it's going to be the biggest project of the year. Wow. Ooh. And you, yep. James, you kind of mentioned already like there's some themes of empowerment in this mm -hmm. album. Um, I don't know how much you can share with us, but what kind of made you guys go into that direction of wanting to make this about empowerment? It's Nadine's, it's Nadine's experience. Like She's one of the most strongest women that I know. She's been through so much and I've seen her grow. So the inspiration was all there. It was really just getting the people together to help tell that story. So, which is why we're really excited. And Nadine, wow. what can you tell us about your album? <laughs> yeah, it's, I feel... <laughs> okay, what was the <laughs> um, What made you kind of decide, like, you know, empowerment is the way to go, especially, like, um, hearing what James had to say about it yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I guess, because I know that a lot of, you know, a lot of people, um, message me and kind of look up to me when it comes to you know empowerment or being um strong and fearless i i receive a lot of especially after um after my brother died a lot of people have been opening up to me like on 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 instagram like i i, I receive dms 
um, and a lot of them were about you know um, asking me how I get through all the challenges that come into my life um, yeah and them sharing their experiences and then what they're going through so I just felt like this is um, this is the perfect you know platform or the perfect you know, the catalyst to use to empower and to help inspire people, um, help inspire people who listen to my music and to all the fans as well. Would you say but that there's there... so much more, so much more in the album? So, would you say that there's um, at least one song there that kind of talks about mental health? There's actually three. Is there three? Yeah, I think there's three. But so there's the whole album because it's it's very personal because um it's all about like what I what I went through, all my experiences. Um yeah, I don't wanna say more because I'm gonna spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for that. I mean <laughs> of course we all know how close this uh, issue is to your heart. So I'm sure it'll really come off as very authentic and genuine and we can't wait for it. Now about um careless still um there have been questions asking if you're planning on doing an online concert with careless artists um james are you open for this and some are actually even suggesting that how you can also do acoustic versions like what you did last night mm -hmm. um i'm just gonna say yes we're very interested and I'll leave it at that. Leave it at that. <laughs> wow, you guys are so good at like giving us previews and just like. But no, yeah, yeah. No, we're bad at keeping secrets. So when you ask us something, sometimes we forget. Oh wait, we're not supposed to, we're not supposed to tell them that. Because then we just spoil the whole project. So we're just gonna, you know, yeah. give you a little bit of that. that. <laughs> They're like Tom Holland in uh, no, in Avengers, in, I know, <laughs> yeah, in giving teasers. And... Yeah, I like that. So why not, you know, go into <laughs> <laughs> Now, okay, before we let you go, I have mm -hmm. an important question here. Uh, don't worry. <laughs> it's, it's not what you think, but <laughs> it's coming from <laughs> at Wagkomiak. Um, as a Howl's Moving Castle fan also, I'm also oh, interested yes. in this. Saan nakatira si Bibi Cal or Calcifer? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the question. Nasaan daw si Calcifer nakatira? No. He's, He's sleeping. He's sleeping. Yes, I, I don't want to pick him up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. No. No. Yeah, that's actually the worst when they're asleep and you're like, yeah, or like when it's on like your leg and you can't move or something. <laughs> yeah. He's always so wherever we yeah. go, like when we walk around, um, Kunyari, where I'm gonna I'm gonna start cooking, he stays like on my foot. Like he sits <laughs> on my foot. So I can't go anywhere else. And he sleeps on my foot, so like you don't want yeah. me to move. Okay, I'll stay here. Yeah, and it's a great to wake him up, right? Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's a really sweet dog. Oh. Now I have another question. I mean, this is for the future, in a man. Now that we're let's mm -hmm. uh, think like five years from now. Um, Sabini at Super Good Plant. How do you want Jadine to be remembered? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, how do we want it to be Jadine be, be remembered? Yes. Yeah. In like one word? No, not really. <laughs> like you can explain uh, your answer. Thank you, by the I way, for this question. You guys um, have super like good plan. Faces on right now. You're like, I know. <laughs> remember the realist. Oh, the realist. Mm -mm. Yeah, I agree. 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 Yeah. No, no, I agree. The realist. Yeah. 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 I'm thinking of other stuff, but and then he said, I'm like, okay, you know, and. <laughs> the realist gang gang we'll accept that that's <laughs> actually a pretty good answer so that yeah. suits you guys james and yeah. nadine thank you for giving us very honest answers as always you know we love yes. um talking to you and thank you for saying yes to mix now um do you have any message for all of the jd fans out there those uh, who have been with you since day one and those who can't wait for you to release new material new projects together 
Yeah, I, want, I just want to say thank you to uh, Mixed, of course, and to all the fans who are watching right now. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you guys are enjoying the show. And um, <laughs> yeah, thank you for all of the support. Thank you for um, voting for us. Um, I see all of your Twitter parties you got going on. Um, we really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we can't wait to share more music with you guys. Um, the lockdown has really slowed us down. Um, but uh, I think that's only natural because people are focusing on what's really um, important to them right now. So it's coming, so just be patient. Yeah, I, I really just want to thank Mix again for nominating Fiend and Summer. Um, and to all the fans, don't worry, it's coming. You just have to wait. We're working hard. We're working really hard on this. Um, and I hope everyone loves it when it comes out. Yeah. He said everything has to. <laughs> <laughs> we have so much in stuff. You just have to wait. Press. Yep. Yes, yes we're and very to all the excited. bleeding fans out there, yes, please keep on voting. Voting is now open for the Mix Awards 2020. You can vote for Summer for mi uh, Music Video of the Year and Fiend for Urban Video of the Year. Yay! Yay. Thank you so much, Nadine and Thanks, Jane, guys. for your time and for your honest um opinions about everything and all of your honest answers. <laughs> so thanks so much, you guys, and thanks as well to everyone who's watching for another Mixclusive interview. This has been Sam with UMS. And I with James Reed and Adid Lustre. Woo! Thank you, JD. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you, thanks, Sam. Um...